Hello and welcome to Rock 53 in a video series on use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be showing you how to automatically switch between cameras when you're rendering out an animation. In the seat in front of you, I have a gunslinger showdown. I have the red monkey head versus the blue monkey head. And if I, if I zoom out and press the A key a few times, you can see I have a lot of cameras already in my scene that I want to use to shoot or film the animation from but I want to automatically switch between the right cameras at the right times when I render out the animation so I don't have to manually switch between the cameras when I'm rendering out. What you might have done in the past is you might have just rendered out your scene or your animation from the camera angle that you wanted, but you might have only rendered out the entire animation from every single camera angle, or you might have rendered out just the specific parts that you want to separate uh, image sequences or separate video files, but there is a better way. Blender has automatic camera switching built right into the timeline window. As you can see at the bottom of my screen, I have a timeline window. If you don't have that, I'll get rid of mine. You can drag down on this little crosshatch area up here to duplicate your 3D viewport, and then I'll change this window type down here to the timeline window. What I want to do here is I want to set the active camera using markers at different times in my timeline. Now markers are a feature that's sort of, I believe they're exclusively used for camera switching, and they're kind of like keyframes. They work a little bit differently. You only need one keyframe to make a still section where the camera is the active camera that you want for a specific length of time. And whenever it reaches a marker on this timeline, it'll switch to the camera that that marker is binded with. Let's go ahead and look through any of the cameras. In fact, what I'll do is I'll press A to, to select all, and I'll select, let's say, the widest camera or the longest shot in this scene. So this one right here, I'll press Control and then zero on my numpad to switch to that camera. It'll actually make that camera with Control zero the active camera in my scene. Sure, I'm gonna start off my scene with that camera angle. So what I'll do is I'll break out of that camera and down here in my timeline, I'll make that a little bit smaller, is at frame zero, I'm gonna add a marker. Of course, you can do that under marker and add marker, but it's also the M key on your keyboard, so I'll be using the M key to add markers for, for the rest of this video. Let's go ahead at frame zero, and I'll press M on my keyboard with my mouse in this window, M, and as you can see, it made a marker called F underscore zero one. Great. The next step is to bind the camera that I have selected, and you can select any one at this point, to the marker that you also have selected. So in this case, I'm gonna bind this camera, which I have selected, to this marker, which I can press A to deselect, and then right click to select. With my mouse in the timeline now, I can press Control B on my keyboard. And there's not much indication that it actually worked, so I'll press Control B, except that it will show, to let you know that it worked, this section up here called bind camera to markers. When I press control B, that comes up. So now this marker is binded to this camera at frame zero. Let's go ahead and now and automatically switch to a different camera in the scene. I'm gonna to switch to this other wide angle shot. In fact, let's go ahead and look through it. So I'll press control zero with it selected. That's what it looks like. It's sort of a standard side or, or profile uh, wide shot or long shot of both characters in their setting. Okay, let's go ahead and break out of that camera with the zero key. And with the camera selected, in fact, that doesn't really matter at this point, I'll go to frame 30 and I'll add a new marker with the M key. And then I'll select that camera and the marker. And with my mouse in this window, I'll press Control B to bind that camera to that marker. And it showed this little title again. This is not a very useful section other than the fact that it's the only way that you could know that it actually worked. And so now it'll automatically switch to that second camera when this green playhead bar reaches that marker. It's sort of like a keyframe. In the past, what you might have done is you might have made keyframes of a camera moving. You might have made a camera of a keyframe at frame one, and then at frame 29, you would have had the same keyframe to basically make like a block of still animated camera or the, the camera uh, in a still position using two keyframes. And then you might have jumped the camera to a different position. This is what I've done in the past when I've been feeling lazy and it would have had a second block of that camera in a new position if you only had one camera to work with. Again, this is the better way. Let's go up to frame 60, and I'll jump to a different camera. This time, I'm gonna jump to that camera right there. Let's go ahead and look at it. I'll press Control-0 to make it the active camera, and I have in my properties panel over here the lock camera to view checkbox selected, so I can zoom out and orbit 
with this camera, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and kind of make it a bird's eye view, a long shot, kind of like that. Again, the nice thing about cameras is that they do not actually show up in your rendering, so I have a lot of cameras in the middle of my scene. Don't worry, they don't show up. Let's go ahead now with this camera uh, position, and I'll break out of it, and I'll go find that camera. I think it's that one. And I'll make a new marker at frame 60, M, and with the camera and the marker selected, I'll press Control B with my mouse in this timeline window. Control B, and this title came up, so it worked. Let's go ahead and see if this all worked. I'll go back to frame zero. I'll put my mouse in the 3D viewport. I'll press zero to look through the camera. And let's go ahead now and press play on the header of the timeline. So let's switch to the second wide angle and then the bird's eye wide angle. I hope you have it. Let's go ahead and do a couple more because I do have a few other camera angles uh, to work with. Let's go ahead and switch to an over the shoulder shot. I'll select that camera. I also have another one over here. These cameras look longer because they have a longer focal length, I believe. If I look under the camera tab with the camera selected, they are 120 millimeter uh, camera focal length lenses. So that's pretty long. Let's go ahead and with that camera selected uh, at frame 90, I'm just sort of evenly spacing these out. You probably would not. Um, I'm going to make a new marker. So M, and then with that camera and that marker selected, with a mouse in this window, I'll press Control B to bind that camera to that marker. And let's say at frame 120, let's switch to a close-up of the red monkey head. So with that uh, camera selected, I'll press, actually I don't have, to have it selected, I'll press M to make a new marker down here. With those two things selected, I'll press Control B, and it should have binded that camera to that marker. Let's go ahead and play the animation from frame zero. I've got to make sure I'm looking through my cameras. And let's go ahead and press play. So wide angle, second wide angle, a bird's eye wide angle over the shoulder, and close up shot. So let's say you automatically switch between cameras. Yes, it will render out from these cameras as long as you have a marker at the very beginning to set the very beginning camera. That'll be this video. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.